All right, week 11, college football breakdown here. One of the games of the week uh, in the Pac-12, we got Washington traveling to Autzen Stadium uh, and taking on the Oregon Ducks. Oregon's obviously had a dominant season, so as you might expect, at home a 13-point favorite here in this rivalry game. Very high total, one of the highest totals on the board at 72 and a half. We're going to start there. I've already locked this in as an official play. Over 72 and a half is a one-unit play for me in this game. Uh, Oregon could put up 50 by themselves. Uh, this is the most balanced attack in college football. We'll get to Bo Nix in a second, but it, it all starts on the ground for the Ducks. They have the best offensive line in college football. I mean, they have allowed one sack on Bo Nix all season, uh, and they've obviously set the tone in the run game. Their top two backs and Bo Nix all over six yards per carry this season. They're able to win up front when, you're, when you have as much explosivity as they have on the backfield. You know, that's how you can get a mediocre quarterback from Auburn. At least as a passer, I mean, I, I'm not going to take away what Bo Nix can do on the ground, but he was a mediocre player at Auburn. But when you have as much as he has around him, guys like Troy Franklin on the outside, it's going to make his life a lot easier. And he's been very effective. When you look at Washington's defense, they fall outside of the top 100 in defensive FEI. I don't expect them to be able to match up with Oregon's O-line in this game. I don't expect them to be able to stop the run. But their true weakness defensively is that secondary. You know, Tanner McKee from Stanford, Jaden Delora, from Arizona, both threw for over 11 yards per attempt on the secondary. So with my expectation that Oregon wins up front, that they establish the run, like it's played out all year, I, I think Bo Nix is going to have a great day. And as I said off the top, I think this is a game where Oregon can really name their number here. Um, now, obviously, when you're playing a total this high, you need help from both sides. I think Washington and their urgency in this game is ultimately going to send this over the total. They run at a very fast pace. One of the fastest paces in college football, actually. Unlike Oregon, very unbalanced offense. I mean, they're almost an exclusively a passing offense. think that running game is mediocre. And by nature of Oregon's strength defensively being that run defense, you know, I, I think Kalen DeBoer is probably going to surrender that. Why, why would we even try to run the ball on the Ducks here? Our calling card is our quarterback, Michael Penix. If you can beat Oregon's defense in one way, it's through the air. Go look at what Stetson Bennett in Georgia did to him in the season opener. Go look a few weeks later what Cameron Ward and Washington State were able to do against this Oregon defense. I mean, they put up 41 points in that game. I mean, that hasn't been a, an explosive offense this year, and they were quite explosive and quite efficient against this Ducks defense. I know that they've looked better in recent weeks, but you're not playing Colorado here. You're not facing off with JT Shrout. You're not playing Cal and Jack Plummer. You're going up against Michael Penix in a really effective Washington passing game. Much like Oregon, Washington's very stout up front themselves. They've allowed just five sacks this season. Sounds a lot worse than what Oregon does, but you know when you're talking about getting in the game 10 and you're not even allowing a sack per game, I mean, that, that, that is elite offensive line play. So these are two really good teams up front. I think that's going to be able to allow each offense to dictate how they want to play this game. Just by nature of how many different ways Oregon can beat you and the fact that Washington's defense is clearly worse, if I had to play a side, I would lay the points with Oregon. I just wouldn't really want to have to worry about that, though. I see this as a 48 to 30 type of game. This total should at least be 75 and a half, 76, if not higher. I mean, we've seen Wake Forest and uh, North Carolina. That total is at 77 right now. I, I don't understand why this is lagging around in the low 70s. It's still high. We're still going to need help from both sides. But with these defenses kind of lagging behind in this matchup, I think we're going to get there. Like I said, I think this is a 48 to 30 type of game. That's going to send this well over the total. So I think 72 and a half is a bit low. I played it. All right, guys, before we get out of here, I know you see this quarter zip right here. Head over to Proud90.com for all your golf apparel needs. With the colder weather now here, they got a great selection of hoodies and quarter zips for you. If you've watched the channel, you've seen me rocking the polos here all throughout football season. Browse their selection. If you see anything you like at checkout, use code Fordham. It's going to get you 15% off your entire order. That's code Fordham at checkout. It's going to get you 15% off your order. Support me. Support Proud90. Proud90. Dot com.